Good morning. My name is Shonda Yarbrough, and I'm an ICPC program consultant with the Virginia Department of Social Services, Division of Family Services. I'm here to take you on a journey through engagement practices and ICPC for older youth. But I do not want you to travel as an adult. I want you to travel as someone who is between the ages of 14 to 17 years old to represent those that have been through the process and those that will at some point in their lives. Out of the 20 years, 20 plus years of experience, my most memorable involves older youth. I love working with older youth. I love how they react when adults try to use their language, but I really love when they speak their minds and use their voices to advocate for themselves. I wanted to connect this passion with my ICPC experience. The ICPC, also known as the Compact, is a uniform law designed to ensure the protection and safety of youth who move across state lines for the purpose of foster care, adoption, placements with parents, and relatives, and residential care. But the ICPC is not just the law. It is another opportunity to support the permanency needs of children and youth in child welfare by assessing an out-of-state family's ability to meet their needs. Distance will always be a factor when using ICPC. We have to work harder to engage those involved and directly impacted by its use, meaning older youth and the out-of-state families. Just an overview of Virginia's data with ICPC and older youth. Between January 2022 and August 2023, we had a total of 123 cases. 23 cases were pending, meaning that a placement decision had not been reached. 24 approved placements, 34 denials, 16 withdrawn or returned, meaning that the local agency did not submit the documentation that was needed for the case to be processed and it was returned, or the agency decided they no longer wanted to pursue the placement resource and withdrew the request. There were 19 placements and there were eight youth that achieved permanency outcomes. Before I talk about the primary issue in my ARP, I do want to talk about what led up to it. It was the phone calls from out-of-state families. Heartbreaking phone calls, families are extremely frustrated with the ICPC process, and it created a visual of the Wizard of Oz and the ICPC process being a tornado, very complicated to navigate, and out-of-state families really being challenged with balancing everything with their day-to-day -day responsibilities, worrying about the youth in care, and also trying to figure out the ICPC process in comparison to in-state families who may not have the same challenges. Now, this is the true issue. Older youth sometimes experience less engagement than out-of-state families during ICPC permanency planning. Going back to The Wizard of Oz, the film had us all focused on Dorothy and the other characters' wishes that we completely forgot that Toto was a part of the entire journey. This is what I imagine is the experience for older youth who are involved in the ICPC process. The adults make plans and sometimes forget that the one who will be mostly impacted by the decisions is left out. Why is this issue important? The Child Welfare Information Gateway has cited that authentic engagement is linked to many benefits, such as the attainment of protective factors and improved outcomes. So when we authentically engage older youth, we're helping them with developing higher confidence, helping them to be able to problem solve and self-regulate. We're also helping them with placement stability. And once their placement is stabilized, we know that they will more likely be able to achieve permanency. It is important because we want you to be successful. Moving in general, whether it's in-state or out-of-state, is a huge transition. So when we're talking about youth having to move from outside of what is familiar to them, we need to make sure that they are engaged every step of the way. I like to add a quote from the publisher, Mindy Hall, who said, Every action has an impact. Choose wisely the impact you want to have. So we have to decide whether or not we want youth to be successful.
And that means authentically engaging them in planning, placement requests, preparing for placement, and achieving permanency. In my ARP, the steps of the ICPC process consist of planning, placement requests, preparing for placement, and achieving permanency. I will go into more details about what should occur within each step later in the presentation. My PICO. My PICO was developed based on the assumption that staff were not prepared to engage youth in the ICPC process. So if staff receive training regarding engaging youth ages 14 to 17 in DSS custody and ICPC permanency planning, will it lead to increased staff knowledge and ultimately family and youth satisfaction and shorter timeframes to achieve permanency? So talking about family and youth satisfaction, that means will their process be less frustrating, less stressful? And in terms of shorter timeframes, we know that with ICPC, there are some things that will be outside of our control, such as the court involvement and the other state's timeframe to complete their steps. So I'm referring to the timeframe it takes for the local agencies to submit an ICPC request after engaging the youth and the out-of-state family. During my literature review, I used the following terms to search for literature, youth engagement, permanency, and ICPC. And here's what I found. Child Welfare Information Gateway provided a bulletin for professionals highlighting the importance of youth engagement with concepts and strategies to apply to their practice. Those strategies did not include support for youth that are affected by distance. The Quality Improvement Center on Engaging Youth and Finding Permanency provided a survey to 24 states in which they responded on how youth engagement is supported by the child welfare systems across the nation. The survey results did not specify ICPC involvement. Wallen, Vanderwill, Peters, and Day summarized eight themes of barriers regarding youth engagement. There was one reference to out-of-state placement being a barrier to engagement. Distance was not identified as a theme. The Youth Policy Institute of Iowa conducted surveys to highlight the extent to which young adults in Iowa were involved in transition planning and feelings about the transition from foster care to adulthood. Results did not identify ICPC involvement. I also conducted a literature review just for information specific to ICPC. In ZECWU, highlighted background information on the ICPC, its underlying problems and arguments for modifications. Sankarin surveyed to determine problems with ICPC, the length of time it takes to complete it, frequency and reasons for denials, and the appeals process for denials. So with the limited information on ICPC only being limited to the procedures, process, and the challenges, that would mean that child welfare professionals would have to be intentional about applying current best practice tools and resources to ICPC engagement. Here's my methodology and process. Step one was submitting the information to the Internal Review Board or the IRB. Step two, case reviews. Step three is recruitment of LDSS workers and former youth in care who have experienced the ICPC and out-of-state families for the purpose of interviewing them. Step four was conducting interviews. Step five is the intervention. And step six is the qualitative analysis of the data. So for the data collection, I was able to review 13 cases of those between the, four, the ages of 14 and 17 years old. And the case reviews were completed across two case management systems, the National Electronic Interstate Compact Enterprise, or NICE, which is the system that is used to manage ICPC requests, and OASIS, which is the Online Automated Services Information System, 
um, Virginia uses that as the case management system for all foster care cases. Case reviews consisted of those that were 14 to 17, year old, 17 years old at the time of the ICPC request. And they were closed cases that finalized permanency between 2020 and 2022. Permanency consisted of guardianship with a relative, not a birth parent, and adoption. As a part of my case review, I created a checklist that would assess the engagement efforts following the four steps of the ICPC process. The planning step, which consists of educating youth and the out-of-state families about ICPC and the tools that they use to engage the out-of-state families' intent to participate. The placement request step, which is the inclusion of youth input in the request documents, submission of the request within 45 days of engaging the older youth and the family. Preparing for placement, this step consists of team meetings, court hearings, and any youth visits with the out-of-state family in order to prepare the youth for placement. And then permanency achievement is the engagement during team meetings, court hearings, and providing status updates, and also getting the family and the older youth's input about their readiness to finalize their permanency goal. I conducted three interviews with Virginia child welfare professionals who had experience with ICPC planning for older youth. The participants' experience ranged from three to 30 years. And the interview questions were also created following the ICPC process steps of planning, placement requests, preparing for placement, and achieving permanency. So the data showed that engagement efforts did not appear to impact permanency. 85% of the cases reviewed resulted in permanency being achieved. But it did raise the question of whether or not youth just followed along with the plan because it was easier or they felt that there were no other options as there were several cases in which the youth stated they did not want to move or were ambivalent, but went along with the plan. All cases were not submitted within 45 days of engagement. And all of the cases were not, there was no engagement for readiness to finalize permanency. Data from the interviews, all participants understood the importance of engaging older youth and out-of-state families in ICPC. They valued communication as the key to engagement, and two workers provided input regarding the need for training and visual resources to support their engagement efforts. One of the things that I also did during my case reviews was to describe the engagement styles that I found at that time. And so decoration, present but not engaged, this is where the youth was invited to participate in a meeting or a court hearing, and they were simply present, but there was no engagement of the youth. Waiting to engage was the result of the worker knowing that the ICPC request was in progress or was going to be initiated, but they decided to wait a period of time before engaging the youth or the family. The pilot, this is the one-sided explanation. And it's similar to if you've flown on a plane, the pilot is speaking in the front cabin and the passengers are in the back and they aren't able to provide any response or feedback to what the pilot is saying. So we have the worker is the pilot and the worker is giving a one-sided explanation about the ICPC process. And there's no opportunity for the youth to engage in the discussion. Youth engaged more than the out-of-state family and youth engaged less than the out-of-state family. And this reminded me of a seesaw where there was an imbalance. Either the youth had more input and the out-of-state family was not included or the out-of-state family was engaged more and the youth was not included. 
By proxy, this is where the youth was engaged by someone other than the worker. So they were either engaged by a licensed adoption agency, sometimes the relative, or there were instances where they were engaged by the supervising state to where they moved. Missed chances, no use of meetings and court hearings to engage or support. This is when the family partnership meetings or court hearings or child and family team meetings were held and the worker did not take advantage of those meetings to engage or to support the youth. Roller coaster. This is where engagement slowly increases before placement occurs, right at placement or shortly before placement, it, it peaks and there's a lot of engagement. And then it quickly drops off after a placement occurs and sometimes the youth would not have any engagement with the worker. And finally, we have slim to none. This is where workers either provided minimal engagement or they didn't engage at all. What did I learn from the data collection? Agencies need support to understand the meaning of authentic youth engagement and connecting it to ICPC cases. And that means learning the difference between just simply involving the youth and meaningfully engaging them. Annie E. Casey Foundation has a great definition of authentic youth engagement, and it's the action of involving youth early and throughout case planning, empowering them to lead discussions about their lives and creating equal partnerships with them. The ICPC process is lengthy enough to allow time for this level of engagement work to occur. Agencies also need support on how to highlight engagement efforts in ICPC documents and case notes. As an ICPC program consultant who sees requests, we don't always see those efforts in the referral documents. And the case reviews show that agencies are doing engagement work. However, it's not captured accurately in the case notes. And finally, more tools and resources are needed to support ICPC engagement with youth. Challenges and limitations to my ARP. Recruitment. I was not able to interview former youth in care who had been through the ICPC process, and I was not able to interview out-of-state families that had been in that process before. For the case reviews, it was challenging for some because of the amount of time that youth were in care. There were some cases where youth were in care for more than two years, and it was very time consuming to go through the case notes to make sure that I was capturing the data accurately. The lack of cases for 17 year olds, I only had two and I would have liked to have reviewed more. However, I've noticed that the older the youth are, the less ICPC requests are being made for those age ranges. And then workers experience with only one to two ICPC cases. So two of the workers that I interviewed, they had only had experience with ICPC for one to two of their cases. So this is my intervention. The intervention was a training titled Going the Distance, Engaging Older Youth in ICPC Planning. And it was developed using the principles of a youth welfare approach and Jim Casey Youth Opportunities Initiative approach to authentic youth engagement. I wanted to find a way to connect those approaches and make them applicable to ICPC. Why was the training created? The literature review revealed the need for training and resources specific to the engagement of older youth involved in the ICPC process. I conducted two trainings for Virginia child welfare professionals at the state and local levels. And I had a total of 23 participants. 
Retrospective surveys were provided to the participants to get their input on the importance of engaging older youth in the ICPC process, their understanding of a youth welfare approach and the application to ICPC, their understanding of the impact of authentic youth engagement on ICPC placement and permanency, the degree to which they will involve older youth in ICPC planning in the future, and their understanding of ways to authentically engage older youth in ICPC planning. And as you can see, the results show that there was more of an understanding following the training than it was prior to the training being completed. Challenges and limitations with the training. There were some tools that I developed with the intervention that I was not able to test out due to time constraints. Virtual delivery of the training was a challenge. When talking about engagement, I think it's important that engagement looks different when delivering training virtually versus delivering it in person. The number of participants, although there were 23 participants, I would have liked to have had more in the training. What was learned as a result of the intervention? Training increased participants' understanding and awareness of the topic. Participants seem to learn more from examples and interactive components that were included in the training. And participants intend to apply the training components to their work, rated from the survey to a great extent and quite a bit. My next steps for my ARP, I will be presenting the findings to the agency leadership. I will also be advocating for the execution of a mock policy, which was created to support the engagement efforts for older youth. I will also continue implementation of my intervention, and I will also work on creating an additional intervention to support the engagement of out-of-state families in the ICPC process. And of course, more research, more data. MPLD impact. This is a picture of a defining moment for me. I, during the kickoff celebration, prior to starting this journey, um, I have a fear of large objects, the statues being one of them. And so the MLK statue was the first one that I saw when I was touring um, the city. And what really stood out to me wasn't just my overcoming that fear, but it was a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it said, out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. And it really became full circle to me because it helped me to understand why I was the one receiving those phone calls from family. I am the stone of hope for ICPC families and for older youth that have to go through that process. And I really appreciated being able to participate in this program, I think I have become a stronger leader, a stronger advocate, and it really helped to ignite my passion on a whole different level. Here are the references listed throughout my presentation. And that concludes my action research project. Thank you.